are some of the nuclear, the primary nuclear facilities in the state of Texas. You have your nuclear power plants, your uranium mining, your nuclear weapons armed bases, your waste facilities over here, your military facilities in New Mexico and in the Panhandle. All of those have different regulatory structures. I mean, you, we think of it as one issue, but it's not. It has, each one of them has to be dealt with in totally different regulatory um, Anybody facility. aware that we had uranium mining in Texas? Mm -hmm. South Texas? Or that, this, uh, anybody yeah. know what Pantex is? Anybody heard that term before? Pantex right up there, the top. Pantex what? is where they assemble every nuclear weapon in the U.S. arsenal. The they final fly, assembly. They fly mm -hmm. them in to assemble them. And no, they, they don't. Fly they them out. Or, no, they assemble truck them. them truck them, in to truck assemble them. You don't want them and flying. Then, uh, trust they me. also uh, uh, are a hospital for sick warheads. Yes, they when they're <laughs> they need that's an interesting refurbishing. Way to go. They come in there yeah. and they get hospitalized and yeah. are all ready to kill people again when they go out. Yeah. All right. So uh, and and by the way, and I'm not sure if I included this in Mavis's bio, brief bio sketch, but in, she was a organizer that lived right across the street from Pantex uh, in, for a long in, time. In the 1980s, this was still a secret facility. This was called the the soap plant because Procter and Gamble. No, because Procter. This is this is not funny. Procter and Procter and Gamble operated it. Everyone knew it didn't make soap, but it was so top secret they weren't men men who worked there, and it was mostly men then, would go into their doctors in in Amarillo with clear evidence of radiation contamination and radiation sickness, and they weren't allowed to tell their doctors that radiation was a factor in their illness, nor were their doctors allowed to ask. Here's a it was good top tactic secret. that has been successful, relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. As Mavis said, it was so top secret, nobody admitted and talked about it in public. So what did we do at the 1982 UN session in New York, the 100 plus whatever mm -hmm. Texas delegation, the Texas Disarmadillo Coalition carried signs talking about Pantex because we were even having to educate those East Coast anti-nukers, mm -hmm. look, the final assembly point is just outside of Amarillo, Texas. So that has been a relatively successful tactic. We haven't ended the nuclear weapons production, but we've at least made a percentage of the population aware of where it's done. That was part of the whole mm -hmm. white train movement of the 80s where we were monitoring the shipment of these things to just make people realize how much activity is going on out there. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because I, I wanted to know also if this uh, anybody in the room was familiar with the name Brian Wilson. Anybody know that name? Beach Boys. Beach Boys. Beach Boys. That's one Brian Wilson. <laughs> Not the one we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So Brian Wilson was an interesting guy. He uh, actually committed acts of civil disobedience against these uh, trains of uh, bombs, uh, missile warheads, and so on, and uh, to the point where he got run over by one oh. and lost a leg, mm -hmm. both legs, leg, a leg, a leg mm -hmm. to it. Uh, one of the most severe examples of paying the price for civil disobedience that I can think of other than... Uh, you really can't trust those people to not kill you. Maybe. You and in fact, you participated in train track actions at mm -hmm. Pantex. Yes, we did, yeah. And when they started the new bomb plant under the Obama administration in Kansas City, we yeah. were all out there being obstructionist uh, in front of these big mega... Caterpillar, kind caterpillar of things. things, and it's like, now how stupid is this? Because those <laughs> people don't really respect life, or they wouldn't be out there doing that. And so, to what to what extent were you endangering your own life? And so you started thinking, okay, we're playing a game of chicken here. I run a little faster than Mavis, so I'm <laughs> so maybe I could stand there a little longer. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there's risk involved in some of this stuff that you got to think about. Is it worth it? You asked that very question. Is this tactic worth it? 
Uh, was it worth it camping out at the test site? Uh, when I develop lung cancer, I'm going to say no, that was probably a mistake on my part because I'm sitting there breathing that crap on the ground. Well, then there's one other action I wanted to make sure and talk about, which is the action that uh, the Bush Library, the one that was uh, <laughs> overturned. Um, can you just, because people may not be familiar with that, uh, most recent action of yours of civil disobedience, can you talk about that a little bit? Um, yeah, but I, I want to pass this around first. Okay. This was made in probably 82, 81 or 82, sometime about that period. And for many of this was, to my knowledge, the first effort to draw the various nuclear facilities in Texas together. Um, and may still be the only effort in Texas to draw these <laughs> various nuclear facilities really together. To the no, they really the don't want you to connect the dots. Uh, but the Bush Library, the, the Dallas City Council and all its uh, yeah, if you, want, if you want to call it that, yeah. Basically decided this was a First Amendment free zone. Um, when they first opened the Bush Library. Yeah. That's when they, uh, well, they've tried the, it. The, they've the, actually the, tried it several the, times before, yeah. but that was, that was their last, last effort to, to prove this was a First Amendment free zone. We felt it sort of incumbent on us to convince them that this was still in the United States. We still operated under a constitution and all those little things. And uh, Of course, that was pre-2017. Yeah. So really, the only way to get this adjudicated was to get it into a courtroom. And the only way to get it into a courtroom was to, for some people to get arrested um, protesting the ordinance. City ordinance that said you could not have signs even T-shirts that had any that could distract people from the highway. If I remember, right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this was the criteria. Of, I don't know if people remember this mm -hmm. or not. This is now three years, four years old at least. Yes, I think probably that. I don't know. It took two years to resolve. And so they it. knew the Bush Library was going to open. Mm -hmm. So the city council passed an ordinance that said you cannot uh, protest anywhere near a highway in a distracting manner. And so the, all the comments were made about billboards that were distracting and so on, and the guys out there with the Statue of Liberty signs and the fl little plume guys that dance around and so forth. But these people were obviously the most distracting force ever, and they got arrested for that, yes? Yeah, with our regular little old signs and signs and banners. That you could uh, barely see some from Central Express. Yeah, well, the intent was never to, to have them seen from Central Express. By the traffic's moving too fast. and. I mean, even we're not stupid about the safety issues of that. But we, but there is a lot of traffic on Mockingbird and coming on and off Central Expressway. Coming to stop so they mm -hmm. have nothing else to do. And that's where you were. And that's where we were, on the bridge across Mockingbird. On public uh, access right road yeah. sidewalks. Yeah. And you got busted? Yep. And, and you were charged with violating the ordinance? Mm-hmm. What did the sign? Uh, we love the First Amendment. Yeah, something. Yeah, something really controversial <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> they tactically decided to be insidious in what the, yeah. the messaging was. We love the Constitution. We love the First Amendment. I mean, really offensive, controversial. Box. And so you, <laughs> you forced the issue in court. Yeah, we we had very good legal support. Very, attorneys thought this was really juicy to tie into, and they and we had good attorneys and uh, took it all the way, you know, through the court system until they negotiate, the city realized it would have to negotiate that um, they were not going to win this and should not win it. But, um, but they really dragged their feet and fought and fought for a long time on it. 